So this next segment, I want to talk about soybean seeding rates. Actually, soybeans have done very well at Hedinger. Over the past 20 years, we actually have a 25 bushel yield average and over the last 10, 36, which is surprisingly well considering how dry a climate it is. If we get those August rainfalls, we can do good with soybeans here. And we actually have you know, good early varieties that seem to be adapted here. So there's always growing and growing interest in doing soybeans out west here. The downside to that is there's been very little work done on soybeans in the semi-arid environment. All that work's been done in that Midwest corn soybean belt. So one of the things we wanted to look at, especially out here, we try to keep costs down. What is the seeding rate we can do for soybeans? And even in the corn belt, they've actually lowered their recommendations from what they used to because seed costs have gone up. People were wanting to save that and then kind of dropped their recommendations from that, you know, 180,000 or even up to 200,000 to where they're saying in the corn belt, they're in that 140 to 160. And they've done a lot of studies that have showed 100,000 evenly spaced plants maximizes economic yield. So we don't need to have a lot of soybeans out there to make it work. Soybeans are an amazing plant. There is kind of an inverse relationship, the amount of pods they'll put on versus the number of plants that are out there. They have the tremendous ability to branch, even at low uh, populations, to, to make up for that and put more pods per plant on. Uh, the downside to that is when you start to get that big bushy plant, harvest may become a little more difficult. Um, so I started this study in uh, actually 2017. Unfortunately, that one droughted out. So we do have two years where I have 2018, 2019, where I've looked at seeding rates from 20,000 to 180,000 in 20,000 increments. I went really low just to see how far we could push that population down there. I'm certainly not gonna recommend soybeans at a corn planting rate at 20,000 out here, but it's interesting how that one will do, you know, even at that lower rate. So I did that study and I also have it in seven inch uh, drilled rows and then also in a row crop planter on 30 inch rows. Um, I was wondering how that would respond out here. We're a little different climate, so row spacing might not always act out like how you'd think it would out here. I did some work at South Dakota where a very dry year, actually wider rows did better than stuff that was drilled because that space in between the rows saves some moisture for an August that may help those plants kind of survive on into the fall. So anyway, we started this study. My two years of results that we have so far uh, have shown out here everything from 100,000 up to 180,000. Similar in yield, no statistical difference, didn't really see into that. And even at 80,000, I only lost one or two bushel. So it's looking like out here, we can make that recommendation that if I have probably 120,000 plants, I have some little bit extra to still make it, um, but I still don't need to be pushing those seeding rates very high at that 160, 180,000, maybe saving a little seed cost. So as far as between the, uh, the drilled plot like I have here versus we do have it actually over here in rows, um, that was interesting. In 20, 18, we actually saw no difference in yield. Seven inch rows yielded the same as 30 inch rows. Saw no difference, they were the same. It was a little bit drier yield. It was about a 35 bushel yield, um, probably more typical yield. Last year, where we were wet and cool, there was definitely a difference. I saw a seven bushel yield advantage of the, of the drilled over rows. Now, when we have a very dry year like this year, I think I actually may see that different where potentially if it stays dry like it has been, I actually might see the rows be doing a little bit better than the drilled. So that's why I wanted to do this study over years. One thing I've tweaked this study this year too, I changed the variety I'm using. The past two years, I've been using a 0.2 uh, variety that had done well out here, um, a commercial proceed variety. I've switched that to the new SDSU uh, ND17009 GT, which is a Roundup Ready 1 variety, which you actually can save your seed back. There's a lot of interest in that variety out here. It maybe is a little early for our environment, but the plus about that is also matures a little bit earlier, so maybe it's an advantage. And it actually has been competitive even with varieties that are uh, a 0.2 to a 0.5, it's had comparable yields. So I've actually switched that study. I'm using that new uh, NDSU ND17009 GT and using that in the study, because I think that's actually the variety that's gonna become quite popular out here. That one is a little bit earlier, so it may change a little bit how those recommendations fall out. So, but, it, but it's interesting how this has come. And like I said, I do plan on actually getting more years on this study, because I think we're actually gonna see 
a significant effect of different years on maybe especially how that row spacing impact is. As far as population, I don't know if we're going to see a lot of changes on that. I'm certainly not going to recommend anything below 80,000, uh, even though that doesn't do much. And the amazing thing is, even at 20,000 seeds per acre, those soybeans yielded 65 to 75 percent of what the high ones did. So those big bushy Christmas tree plants that push, is amazing what you could do out there. That's partly when you see like when you have uh, poor stands with uh, soybeans, they often will tell you you're better off leaving it versus replanting it because they'll make up for most of that versus uh, getting a late crop in. Mm -hmm.